In honor of the 40th anniversary of Transformers, I decided I'd take you all on a nice little walk of my experience with the Transformers franchise. Why do I do this two days early? Because on Tuesday I gotta get back to work and I have no idea when else I'll have time to talk about this. So, my experience with the Transformers franchise starts here. The original Transformers, not even the original, this is not the original. This is. This came out 40 years ago. This, no fucking clue. I know when it came out, but I ain't doing math right now. My mom took me and my sister to see this movie in theaters when I was a kid. I liked it. Still sort of do because of the nostalgia, but personal opinion here, I like this more than this. Y'all are free to disagree with me. They're called opinions for a reason. Anyways. But yeah, 40 years. Now that's gotta be something, right? What about this managed to last through all of this? Well, let's start with the original. Trans the original Transformers cartoon. Known to Transformers fans as Generation 1, or G1 for short. Released in 1984, this is the story of, you know, alien robots who transform into vehicles. Their, the war on their own planet became so devastating they had to come to Earth. And yes, I will admit, it is weird when the tagline is robots in disguise, and yet... These guys are never in disguise. They're just walking around like Transformers. This is the complete series that a friend of mine was f was kind enough to give me for my birthday earlier this year. Nick, dude, thanks. Yeah. This whole four seasons... There was also an animated film released in 87, but I've been having some trouble finding that. If anyone can, I, I had a copy given to me when I was a lot younger, but I have no clue what the hell happened to it. If anyone else can find a spare copy, please let me know. But yeah. Transformers Generation 1. 40 years later, how does it still hold up? If you were to ask me, I'd say this is still one of the cornerstones of science fiction. Right up there with Star Wars, Star Trek, and Planet of the Fucking Apes. Still one of the cornerstones of science fiction. The series was so successful that in the 90s, it spawned a nice little spin-off called Beast Wars. Yeah. Beast Wars Transformers. I'm not going to go over the plot of every series, but I will say I'll try and narrow it down. In this series, a group of other Cybertronians travel to another planet that's rich with energy. Spoiler alert, it's Earth millions of years in the past. If you're not going to watch it, do you really fucking care? And because the energy is so unstable and there are no vehicles, they have to take the forms of animals... So any of you who ever wanted to see the Transformers transform into animals instead of vehicles, this might be for you. It got a spin-off where they returned to Cybertron called Beast Machines, which is still pretty well received, but yeah, I'm not going over that. Too much confusion, too much sci-fi, even for me. Some years later, some years later, that launched the next set of the Transformers franchise, 
these three Transformers anime, known as the Unicron Trilogy. A series of three different anime that all have to do with one character, Unicron. Once again, not going over that. Transformers was such a banger franchise that in 2007, Michael Bay, one of the young up-and-coming directors of Hollywood at the time, got permission to make this. Now, I didn't experience much of Transformers until later. Like I said, this is my first exposure to the series. I think most people my age probably did see this film when it came out back in 2007. And how does it still hold up all these years later? Um, I like it because of childhood nostalgia. I mean, that feeling of going to the movie theater, having a good time with my mom and my sister. We still watch the Transformers movies occasionally, but... Compared to the rest of the series, compared to the whole rest of the franchise, this just, I'm going to say it, this is the weakest part of my collection. But the sequels somehow get weaker. I still love it because of nostalgia, but that's the only reason I've got. A couple years later, Cartoon Network got the rights to make a Transformers show, and they made this. This is held in high regard by Transformers fans. Transformers Animated. I still think it's a pretty good show, but I still personally like G1 better. Again, y'all are free to disagree with me, but I like this a little better. After so many variations of Transformers, in 2010... Writers decided they wanted a unified vision of Transformers. So in 2010, they made an awesome game called Transformers War for fucking Cybertron. Yeah. This game is 14 years old. How well does it hold up? Um, 14 years later... It still kicks ass. Same for its sequel here, Fall of Cybertron. Yes, you can play as that fucking Autobot T-Rex right there. It becomes an option later on. Same year, 2011, they released this series, Transformers Prime. Also good. Damn good show. And... I know what you're wondering. Aren't there, like, a dozen other stuff about Transformers? Yeah, Transformers Prime got a spin-off called Robots in Disguise, which was pretty good. Nickelodeon got a show called Earthspark, which recently got canceled. Which, yeah, um... To Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon is infamous for canceling series with a lot of potential. They've done it again. And to that Nickelodeon, I just say, um, that. Anyways. And last but not least on what I'm going to comment on, there are so many Transformers cartoons, not all of which are good. But I'd hate to end this on a bad note. And just because I didn't like them didn't mean they were bad. I just didn't care for a lot of them. Netflix's War for Cybertron trilogy. The, Ro the, the Rescue Bots cartoons. Robots in Disguise 2001. Yeah, that sucked. Most fans call that the worst of Transformers. Transformers Cyberverse. These things weren't well received by fans. But that doesn't mean they're bad. I'm sure there's someone out there who does enjoy them. Over time, Transformers went from an awesome Saturday morning cartoon that was just meant to have a good time 
to some dark, gritty realism using sci-fi robots to show the horrors of war. And a message for us in case Earth should ever meet the same fate as Cybertron. Transformers could be just about anything. It all depends on what you prefer. Do you prefer just sitting down and having a good time, or do you prefer a depressing yet inspiring realistic sci-fi? It all depends on you. And in 40 years, Transformers has managed to be both these things at a couple different times. I can't say what the future holds for the franchise, but I can easily say good, bad, or indifferent. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe two days early, but I want to wish Transformers, this awesome, awesome franchise, happy 40th. Hope, I hope we continue on this great path, and as Optimus Prime likes to say a lot... Till all are one.